Hi, my name is Zila and I messed up. Here's the thing, as I was editing this video, I found out that I didn't film an intro. Who forgets to film an intro? Me, apparently. But I thought, you know what, no worries. We can just film the intro, wear the same clothing, just make it all look like it was filmed on the same day. This is something that a lot of people do. But I forgot that those people are not me because this girl cut her hair. So I'm screwed. This is me saying, I'm sorry, I forgot to film the intro. I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, the video that you're about to watch is a video where I share some tips, some things that I do and that I use on my timeline that will help me edit faster. So I hope that you enjoy the video. Let's just go. Let's just start with tip number one. My first tip would be to organize your timeline. And yes, I've said this many times. Usually when I start a video, and we're doing something. I tell you to organize, but trust me, organization is so important. And I haven't done that a lot of the times. And from my own experience, I can tell you, please organize your timeline. Because usually what happens to me, I've become a lot better at it, but usually what happens to me is I start a project, super organized and then you know you either have a deadline or you just want to get it over with at one point because you've been working on it for way too long and you're just like okay let's put this sound effect here let's put this title here you're just dropping things on your timeline and then when you come back to it later you're just like what you cannot find anything it is just unorganized it looks super complex we don't want that so what i would recommend you to do is to use one track per thing or multiple tracks for sound effects for example but have one track for your a-roll one track for your b-roll perhaps one track for your adjustment layers one track for your titles one track for your dialogue one track for your music and one track for your sound effects or of course use two but keep it organized so you know where's what and you can easily assign labels and things like that later or immediately because my next tip is to use labels and label your footage and this is super useful when you're making a vlog for example for example a travel vlog and you've been to multiple places and for example, you went on a boat. So if you label that in a specific color, if you come back to your project or you're working in your project and you wanna adjust something in that boat sequence, you can easily do that because you know, you can adjust things very easily and very quickly because now you know that the boat sequence is blue, for example. And let's be honest for a second, it is visually pleasing and it just looks more professional. So I would really recommend you to do it, not just because it looks visually pleasing, even though, you know, it is, but definitely make sure that it works for you and that you can actually find segments of your vlog or your video very quickly. One thing that annoys me and maybe you as well is when you overlooked a clip. So you're putting together your video and then you find this video and you forgot to put it in. <sighs> what you can do is you can select everything, move it, then put the clip there and then move it back or ripple delete it. But what you can also do, which is so much easier and what I would recommend you to do is to click on the clip that you want to insert and then hit control or command if you're on a Mac on your keyboard, then drag it to the timeline. And as you drag it to the timeline, you will see this line with these little triangles or arrows appear, which will show you that everything behind what you're doing right now is being moved backwards. And now if you drop it to the timeline, as you can see, there are no gaps, everything just moved, no more selecting all, no more ripple deleting, no more slip tools, no more nothing. You're happy, I'm happy, we're happy. Win, win. Sometimes it is the case that we do need to hit A on our keyboard to select everything and then move it around. But what we want to do actually is not select everything, but select everything from selected tracks. Now, how do you do that in a very easy way? Well, what I always do is I lock the other layers. So for example, an adjustment layer, I don't want the adjustment layer to move anywhere. I click on the lock of that track and what you will see now are these diagonal lines throughout the track and that means that it's locked. So now if you hit A on your keyboard, you select all and you wanna move everything, you will see that everything on that track won't move. Depending on how long you've been using Premiere Pro and how 
pro you are at Premiere Pro, you may know or you may already have nested clips before. Now, if you don't know what that is, basically what you do is you group a bunch of clips together. So if we refer back to our boat segment that we talked about earlier, what we can do is we can select all of those clips of that segment and then right click it and hit nest. Now you will see it's become one whole thing. This doesn't mean that you cannot edit the clips individually anymore. If you want to do that, just double click on the nested sequence and here you will find all the individual clips. Nesting clips is useful for a bunch of reasons, but the reasons that I think are most important and relevant to you in order to consider whether you want to nest the clips or not is first of all, if you want to apply effects to multiple clips or to a group of clips. Also, for example, if you want to stabilize and change the speed of a clip or clips, you have to nest your clip or clips because they don't work together. So you first have to change the speed, for example, then nest your clip or clips and then apply the warp stabilizer effect. Nested sequences are also very useful if, for example, you have a more complex edit going on and there's a lot happening on your timeline because if you nest a sequence, everything will just look a little bit less complex. You can still find everything as easy as before, but you actually have a better overview. One thing that I already said before is that if you want to edit one individual clip that is in that nested sequence, just double click on the nested sequence and then you can edit that individual clip. Now, one thing that I do want to note is if you change the duration of one of those clips, the duration of the nested sequence will change as well. You will see that the length of the nested sequence has changed. These were my five timeline tips to help you edit faster and more efficiently in Premiere Pro. Now, if you're like, but Lila, I want to learn more or Lila, I want to get five more tips. Well, you're in luck. Just check out this video. And of course, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell in case you want to be notified. And so we can see each other in the next video. I don't know.